So you're doing some research. You've collected some interview data or some other sort of qualitative data. And now you don't know what to do with it. What to do next? Well, you're not the first and you won't be the last. So let's see if we can help. Well, you could go to the library. You could do some reading. Look for some books on qualitative research and particularly data analysis. Here are four books that I find particularly useful. I'm sure you'll find some others if you have a bit of a look. So you've either collected some data or you're planning to. If you're planning to, I'd suggest you do two or three interviews and then stop. Do a full analysis before you collect any more data. Some people will collect 10 or 20 full interviews, then have a load of data and wonder what to do with it next. You're going to need to decide whether to do a full transcription or a summary of the interview. But in either case, my suggestion is that you should take an audio recording so that you can re-listen to the full interview, what was said and how it was said. This will be important in your coding. Once you've done that, you need to familiarise yourself with the full interview. Listen to the audio recording. Read the full transcript. Walk around in the interview data before moving to coding, analysis, the development of tentative grounded theory, and then testing validation before reaching a point where the data is saturated and there is no need for any further collection. Before we look at coding in more detail, just a couple of definitions. Whilst there are different schools of thought, the use of grounded theory here is meant to mean the use of inductive analysis to construct theory from the data that's collected. That data is likely to be primarily, although maybe not exclusively, qualitative in nature. Once the da data is collected, the process of coding is undertaken. This is essentially the examination of the data to identify categories and subcategories, themes and issues. Categories can be described as higher level concepts that allow subcategories with common properties to be grouped. So for example, if we have a category of quadrupeds, a subcategory might be horses, cattle, sheep. Now coding is an interpretive activity, it's not objective. It requires the researcher to walk around in the life of the participant and to try to interpret what's been said in a way which is true to what the participant meant. So it's important to maintain some rigour. This is often referred to as trustworthiness. And here are a few suggestions. You need to keep an open mind and avoid preconceptions. Don't assume you know the answer before you've actually done the analysis. You need to interpret the data but you need to remain true to the participant. Focus on what the participant said and how they said it, not what you think. Maintain the participant's voice. Where there are important citations, identify them. Use them. Bring the work to life. Maintain a chain of evidence. That is, you need to record how you've come about making the decisions you have. This allows the reader to interpret your analysis and to make sense of what you've said. Maintain a constant position of testing and challenging your own ideas through feedback loops, constant comparison of data with previous data, constant comparison of analysis with previous analysis, and also conduct mem member checks. That is, go back to the participants and ask them whether you, they think you've got it right. And of course, triangulation through multiple interviews. When you've done a couple of interviews, fully analyse them. See what's coming up. Develop some tentative grounded theory. And then follow up with some more interviews until you reach a point of saturation. What do we mean by coding and how might you go about it? We'll talk in detail in a second. 
But for some general remarks, essentially you're looking for key words, phrases and ideas that arise directly from the data. You're looking for similarities and consistencies in what the participants said. You're also looking for differences and inconsistencies, contradictions. You're looking to develop categories and subcategories. You might record those with margin notes, using a highlighter, underlining key words, using sticky notes that you write on, and then either keep, discard, or rearrange. You might use a mind mapping approach. You can do this on a piece of paper, or you can use a piece of software that you can download from the website that's on the slide. And there are also specialised coding softwares, such as in vivo, which you can have a look at on the website that's there as well. So let's now look at a little more detail about how you'd go about the coding. You need to read the materials, listen to the materials if you have audio tapes, not just once, but twice, three or four times, until you feel you've got a grasp of the total interview till you've got it in your head, till you feel that you can walk around in the shoes of the person you interviewed. Look for meaning rather than detail at this stage. You might like to start identifying tentative major categories and possibly subcategories, but in the early stages, maybe avoid making it notations. Once you feel that you're familiar with the total transcript or the total audio, start your coding. This will of course already start to happen in your head, but really start to record these at this stage. Read it again, identify major categories, themes and issues and start to annotate, if in the first place in a rough form. Then read it again, check your initial ad annotations, add, edit, change. This is meant to be a dynamic process. Start to identify relationships between categories and subcategories, that is, properties that are similar. At this point, you're moving towards detailed coding. Read the transcript in detail, paragraph by paragraph, sentence by sentence. Code for sub-themes and sub-categories. Then repeat and repeat again until you're confident that you have reached a point where you can go no further. Once you feel you can no, go no further with the transcript that you're working on, put it to one side. Move on to the next or conduct the next interview. And then repeat the whole process until you reach the point of saturation. That is, that you've collected enough data and analysed enough data to the point where you can justify your categories and where your categories are no longer changing as a result of new information being collected. These categories should be representative of the similarities, consistencies, differences and inconsistencies, as well as the aberrant findings that you have identified. So, as an exercise, if you don't have an interview of your own to uh, analyse, do a search engine search for Paul Keating's 1992 Redfern speech. Conduct a coding analysis of this speech using the strategies that we've just talked about. Good luck.